Hello everyone, welcome to Lost in the Real. Today I'm going to be ranking all 12 newly released films that I saw in February. There were a couple of movies that dropped this month that I actually saw months ago, like Nomadland, Minari, and French Exit. If you are interested in hearing my thoughts on those films, please check out my reviews, but they will not be a part of this ranking. This has been a very interesting month for movies, if you could say the least. Uh, there were a couple of amazing movies that I saw, as well as some ones that were very divisive, that either people loved or hated, and also because it is one of the earlier months of the year, there were a couple of duds. So, let's talk about it. ranking for all 12 of the films that I saw in the month of February, I have seven different tiers that I'll place each of these movies in. At the very end of the video, I will move everything around so you can see what the very best film of the month was and the very worst. And before we get started, please make sure to chime in in the comments down below. Let us know what your favorite film of the month of February was, what was your least favorite, and then all of your picks in between. We love to have great conversations here at Lost in the Real. And if you'd like to help support the channel and get lost with me, our new official Lost in the Real t-shirt is available now in our merch store. The link to that store is in the description of the video. If you do get a shirt, please take a picture of yourself in it and send it to me on social media, and you will possibly pop up in one of our next videos. Now, let's get to ranking. So, I'm going to be ranking all of these films in order alphabetically. And that means our first movie that we're going to be going over is Barbin Stier, Go to Vista Del Mar. This movie sees Kristen Wiig and Annie Momolo re-teaming after writing Bridesmaids together, and unfortunately, this movie definitely does not hit the standards that Bridesmaids set for us. This is a bizarre, silly, random movie that I thought was quite hilarious at times, but it also falls flat a lot of the time, too. This movie reminds me a lot of Austin Powers and Zoolander in the fact that it is zany, cartoonish, outlandish, and there there are a lot of cameos, so that also gives you an idea if you're either going to love or hate this movie. I, on the other hand, am going to put Barb and Stair go to Vista Del Mar on the meh tier. I think it could be a fun movie that you can watch with your friends and laugh a couple of times, but it's kind of forgettable as well. And next up is the first of two films about singers named Billy, and that is Apple TV Plus's Billie Eilish, The World's a Little Blurry. If you are a big fan of Billie Eilish, or even a casual one, I think you're going to find enjoyment out of this documentary. This is a captivating and intimate portrait of the young singer, and it really allows the viewer to see the world through the eyes of her. Uh, unfortunately, it is very long. It's two and a half hours, and I don't think it really brings anything new to the table besides allowing viewers see unseen footage of Eilish. So if you're not a fan of her, definitely don't watch this. But I am, so I'm going to put Billie Eilish, the world's a little blurry, in the very good tier. Next up on the list is a film that not a lot of people, I guess, have heard about or have seen. It's called Body Brokers. And this one, I think, is definitely worth a watch if you can stomach it. But it's nothing really to write home about. It's about people basically taking advantage of addicts by putting them in the system of rehabilitation and reaping the rewards from it. Once again, another movie in February about get-rich-quick schemes. This one works in a lot of ways, especially because I was really invested in the lead character, and it also has a really nice supporting turn by Frank Grillo, but that ending is like, <clears throat> like, I still, I said I would think about it, and I have, but I haven't decided on if I absolutely hate it or uh, think it's brilliant. So I am going to put Body Brokers in the just okay tier. Like I said, I think it's worth a watch. 
The fourth film on this list is a movie that I had no idea was going to be as divisive as it is, and that is Netflix's I Care A Lot. I was actually trolled on Instagram for liking this movie. I didn't realize that that could happen, but hey, it's the internet. I guess anything can happen. But haters can still keep on hating. Because I am still going to love this movie. I think it is fantastic. I think Rosamund Pike deserves an Oscar nomination for her performance here. She is sinister and awful and just chewing the scenery every single second. And the supporting cast is outstanding as well. I went into this movie in the first 10 minutes realizing that this is a satire about awful people. And I think that's why I enjoyed it so much. And I know people are just not going to be able to get over that fact. But I had so much fun with this film and I do recommend it even if you are going to hate it because it is a film to watch and to talk about. So I am going to be putting I Care A Lot on the amazing tier. Hate on that, trolls. <laughs> And now we have Judas and the Black Messiah, which is still streaming on HBO Max if you haven't checked it out yet, and I absolutely recommend that you do. I was able to see this at Sundance, and I was blown away. And I actually watched it for a second time when it premiered on HBO Max, and it resonated even more with me. I was so impressed by Shaka King's direction here, and all three performances by Lakeith Stanfield, Daniel Kaluuya, and Dominique Fishback are just uh, jaw-dropping. I think especially Kaluuya, just, I, I hope he wins the Oscar for Best Supporting Actor here. He just is transformative in the role. Uh, I think that this is a movie pretty much anyone will like, and it really delves deep into this issue of the Black Panthers and of race and uh, really gives us a time capsule into this period. So I'm going to be putting Judas and the Black Messiah also in the amazing tier. Like I said, please check this out. It is still streaming on HBO Max, I think, for another two weeks. Next up is a film that truly blew me out of the water, no pun intended, and that movie is Little Fish. If you don't believe me, check out Austin Burke's ranking of the month of February because he also loved this film. This is a pandemic era love story that I'm pretty sure was filmed before the pandemic, and it stars the amazing Olivia Cook and Jack O'Connell who have incredible chemistry with each other, and this is a movie about people collectively losing all of their memories and it's heartbreaking visually stunning and just one of the most beautiful love stories i've seen in film in quite some time i absolutely recommend that you seek this film out and i really hope it ends up on my top 10 of the year i think it has a really great chance of doing so so i'm gonna put little fish also in the amazing tier the seventh film on this list is Netflix's Malcolm and Marie, which is another very divisive movie that Netflix came out with. Uh, the initial reviews that came out of this movie uh, were amazing, and they were calling it a masterpiece. So I was really looking forward to it, and by the time I ended up seeing it, then all of a sudden all of these horrible reviews came out for it. I'm in between on this movie. I think the performances are so good by John David Washington, and Zendaya. I think Zendaya deserves an Oscar nomination at least for this movie. I think she's so good and she's just really proving to be a total package as a star. But this movie is a little meandering and you can only take so much of a couple yelling at each other and arguing. And I don't know, I just kind of lost interest in it after a while, but I still think it is a handsomely directed film with some really, really good screenwriting here. I just wish it had been cut a little bit and there was a little bit more substance to it I think. So I'm going to be putting Malcolm and Marie on the just okay tier. Yeah I think that it's yeah I think it's good on the just okay tier. 
And now we have a film that I was so excited about seeing, and Lionsgate sent me a screener so I could see it early, and I was so thankful to them for doing that. But this is a movie that had so much potential and just did not live up to it, and that is Silk Road. The story about the Silk Road, which is a black market website that sold drugs and was eventually taken down, it's a fascinating one. But this movie falls really flat, and I think why is because they had two stories going on. One about the person who started Silk Road, and then another one about the FBI agent that's trying to take him down. And we never concentrate on either of them long enough to really get fully involved in this story. And I do think that some of it is quite entertaining, but this could have been the social network with drugs and it just did not hit that mark at all. So I'm going to be putting Silk Road on the meh tier, unfortunately. I very slightly recommend it if you do think the story is interesting, but I have a feeling you'll probably get let down like I did. Next up is a movie that was just released on HBO Max, another movie that people are loving to hate, Tom and Jerry, based on the classic Hanna-Barbera cartoon shorts. And you know what? I liked this movie. I think it was a lot of fun. I think kids are really going to enjoy the animated hijinks. And I think if you were a fan of the original cartoons, you'll have a good time because of the nostalgia of it. Do I think it's overlong? Yes. Do I think it's trying to be hip and for the millennials and that is annoying? Yes. But I think most of it works and I had a good time with it. So I'm going to stick to my guns and say that Tom and Jerry is just okay. It's not great. It's just okay. And next up is a film that I wanted to sneak in right before the Golden Globes tonight, and that is Hulu's The United States vs. Billie Holiday. Andra Day is nominated for Best Actress in a Dramatic Film for her role here, and boy does she deserve it. She is so fantastic in this role, but she deserved a better vehicle for her to show off her chops in. This is not a good movie. Lee Daniels directs this film, and he also directed Precious, which was a fantastic fantastic film that really was so gritty and deep and dark and soulful, but this movie has all the grit of a Lifetime movie. I really did not appreciate this film's lackadaisical approach to its subject matter, and this movie did not do Billie Holiday justice whatsoever. I wish this movie would just disappear and Andrew Day could find another Billie Holiday movie to star in. So, the United States vs. Billie Holiday is going in the very bad tier for me. The only reason it's not in the worst of the worst is because Andrew Day gives an incredible performance, but I don't, I don't think this movie's worth watching at all. And next up is a film that is destined to become a cult classic, and that is Willy's Wonderland, starring Nicolas Cage beating up possessed animatronic creatures. I had so much fun with this movie, and I totally understand why some people are hating on it. It is not a good movie, it is not well directed, and some of the acting is quite poor. But I just pictured myself in a crowded theater, surrounded by a bunch of other horror fans, just sitting here and watching this ridiculous movie and having a blast doing so. I don't think this film was trying to be anything other than what it is, and it delivered on that. So I will be putting Willy's Wonderland in the just okay tier. I have a feeling I'll be watching this movie a lot in the future. And last up on this list is the remake of the film Wrong Turn. So I love the original with Eliza Dushku. I think I have a certain place in my heart for it because it was one of the first R-rated horror films that I had seen. And I've seen the second, which is a complete downgrade, but okay. And I haven't seen any of the others in the franchise, which I've heard are total garbage. 
But for some reason, I got really excited for this movie, and I'm sad that I hyped it up so much because I was really let down. This is nothing like the original film. It's too polished to have that B-movie schlocky horror vibe, and it's not polished enough to be on the tier of films like The Conjuring, so it's kind of sitting there in the middle just not doing anything for me. Uh, it doesn't have enough character development for you to care about any of the people that this is happening to, and I do feel like it was trying too hard to be woke and intellectual for its own good. So I'm gonna put Wrong Turn, the remake, in the very bad tier. I don't think this one's worth watching at all. Okay, so now I'm going to put all of these films in order from the very worst to the very best of the month of February. So, we don't have any worst of the worst this month, so that's a good thing. On the very bad tier, uh, I'm going to keep it how it is because Wrong Turn is definitely worse than Billie Holiday, but both of them are just very, very bad. Uh, over here on the meh tier, I think I will also keep that how it is. Silk Road was so disappointing. Barb and Star is a lot of fun, but it's still just not very good. So gonna keep that there. Let's go up to just okay. Uh, Willy's Wonderland, I'm going to scoot all the way up to the very top of this tier. Like I said, I had a lot of fun with it, even though it's not a, a good movie. Uh, then I'm gonna keep Body Brokers there. I think that's definitely worth a watch if you're interested in the premise. Malcolm and Marie stays there, uh, which makes me really sad, but yeah. Uh, and then Tom and Jerry will be the last one on that tier. Okay, uh, Billie Eilish is all alone in the very good tier, and she will stay there. And then the amazing tier. Um, okay. Um, I'm going to scoot Little Fish above Judas. I think that movie is incredible, guys. I know I'm probably a broken record, but please watch this film. It is just incredible. Uh, but so is Judas. Also, please watch that movie. And then I Care A Lot is easily my favorite film of this this month. Uh, honestly, I almost want to put it on the masterpiece tier, but I don't think it's just there. So, yeah, my top three films of the month of February 2021 are I Care A Lot, Little Fish, and Judas and the Black Messiah. And the worst film of the month is Wrong Turn. Thank you so much, guys, for watching Lost in the Real. We will see you soon.